Hey everyone, what is going on? This is Keel Dyken. So I'm pleased to announce that RetroPie has officially been ported over to the Raspberry Pi 5. I know a lot of you have been waiting uh, for your Raspberry Pi 5. I'm still personally waiting for a few of mine to come in. But um, as you know, the last time RetroPie had to convert something over for the Pi 4, it took them about uh, six to eight months. I think it, took, it didn't come out until about May or June of 2020. But now RetroPie has officially been ported over to the Pi 5. Unfortunately, uh, because I don't have my device, I can't showcase uh, much of what it can do. Um, if you guys want a better indication as to the performance in terms of what it would be capable of doing, you can check out my videos on the Orange Pi 5 or running RetroPie. Now, I know many of you pretty much are adapting and migrating over for retro gaming with the anticipation to use RetroPie and take advantage of some of the newer emulators such as Will Yuzu work? What about PlayStation 2 emulation and a few of the other emulators that may be out there? Uh, unfortunately, as of right now, RetroPie has left it up to the community uh, to compile that themselves. So PlayStation 2 and Yuzu is not officially supported through RetroPie. So we have a list of uh, repositories. Uh, this was converted over about 10 days ago or so, about maybe two weeks ago or so for, uh, for your gaming. So we're gonna take a look at some of the uh, pinned overviews here that we have. Uh, as far as RetroPie, you have the whole list. As you see, Jules uh, managed to pull up some of the new requests uh, just as of yesterday. Uh, we have some new script modules. Everything's been comported over. Uh, we had a few things that were corrected as far as the image. This was done about two weeks ago. RetroPie now knows to boot on the Pi 5, so it knows exactly uh, what device to port over or actually boot to. Uh, but other than that, there really wasn't any additional uh, new emulators that's really been added. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with all the standard emulators that come on the Pi 4 uh, and the Pi 3, uh, not much has really changed there for the most part. Now, there were some other issues in regards to some of the new uh, adaptations uh, that have been pulled over. If we go over to our pull requests and codes, you can see add Vulcan flags for Pi 4 and Pi 5. Now, if you guys have been following some of my other videos for the past few weeks, I've been talking about a major difference between desktop emulation, which sees the full aspect of the board, it sees Vulcan, and then of course using a gaming front end such as like RetroBad, Batacera, and RetroPie. Now, I can't speak for Recal Box or Batacera, uh, right now, but speaking directly from RetroPie, as you can see, it says I uh, added Vulkan as supported renderer for Pi 4, Pi 5 when ra running Raspberry OS 12 Bookworm. Uh, also, uh, the new RetroPie will be running new Bookworm as well. Technically, the support it was added in Bullseye for Pi 4, but it was only available under X11. Notes most emulators include the Vulkan headers, so there's no need to add uh, lib Vulkan dev as a dependency. Not all emulators will run Vulkan. That's the problem we had with the Supreme Team when they first uh, added Vulkan over to the Pi 4. It didn't matter. The emulators just didn't see it. And so a lot of our work was far advanced and ahead of what these emulators can do. And honestly, that's still the case. So not all emulators will run from Vulkan from KMS, DRM, PP, SPP, Dolphin can use it under X11. Wayland, while RetroArch runs with Vulkan video drivers on KMS, uh, KMS DRM, switching RetroArch to use the Vulkan renderer needs to include the installation configuration of Sling shaders, which is not handled at the moment. And so that's why I said uh, previously in my last videos, that's why a lot of videos are confusing, misleading, is because you're not going to get Vulkan running RetroPie or running through RetroArc, running through an actual gaming front end. It'll be available if you wanna run a standalone uh, emulator on desktop because it sees it that way, but that's not gonna be your experience if you're using a truly dedicated front end with like RetroPie, RetroArc for the Raspberry Pi 5. In fact, even on the Orange Pi as well. But this is good news. As soon as we get our boards in, we'll be able to compile all of this, uh, add additional updates. Uh, we are supporting PS2 running Asterix. So if you guys want to have an idea about what that will look like, please keep in mind the Orange Pi 5 does have more power uh, and sustainability in terms of 
processing power and that architecture it has eight uh chip eight cores on that particular core uh board so it can outperform the raspberry pi 5 now where i would like to see or see what would be possible is in terms of the first four cores on the pi 4 uh, the Pi 5 compared to the Orange Pi, uh, it is a little bit more powerful because you can overclock that to 3.1. So from an individual running one application, one emulator standpoint, uh, it may either be on par or you, you may get some better performance because uh, the Orange Pi 5 uses something called a big little architecture. It uses the smaller cores for the smaller press processing. Then it uses the other bigger cores, which are 2.4 each. There's four of those uh, for emulation. So Asterix, for example, uses four cores. It doesn't see eight. Most emulators only see two, three, maybe four cores. So that would be a very comparable test as to see how will Asterix such as Time Crisis and a couple of other games uh, perform in this environment. And I think in that environment, it will be equal uh, because uh, you're running one application, you're not running a bunch of different programs or whatever uh, in the back. So that would be a, a really good test. I can't wait to get that. I'll run Time Crisis too to see if there's certain indications uh, within gameplay that stutters from one uh, to the next. Uh, but again, um, this is some good news from the community. You guys don't have to sit around and wait uh, for anybody else to configure it. Obviously, uh, we, you know, you, we're still waiting on boards. Most people aren't getting their boards until February or April. Maybe I'll take a trip to Micro Center just see if they happen to have some in stock. But once that is done, we'll be able to do some additional things uh, for the Pi 5 and pro get, provide you with uh, some additional emulation. Uh, we are looking into compiling Yuzu, which is the Nintendo Switch emulator for RetroPie that will be done through the Supreme Team. That is not something done officially, but I honestly have no clue uh, how it would look and how it would work because we don't even have that right now on the Orange Pi 5, even though it is possible. But I think there are some video configuration issues or, that couldn't be compiled, but uh, we will look into that. But again, Asterix, uh, which is the one of the best PlayStation 2 emulators, uh, will be fully ready to go. Uh, so as soon as we get our boards, you're, you're looking at about a good, about a good month and a half, you know, to fully get some uh, a decent unofficial bills or whatever out there that would be based off of uh, official work but uh yeah it is based off of bookworm this is really something good to see i can't wait to see what we could do with this but for more information make sure you guys like and subscribe i have a playlist uh detailing some additional information in regards to retro gaming and how you know what my thoughts are on the pi 5 and the last thing i definitely want to mention is that all of you please make sure that you get as much ram as possible uh, we have reached a crossroads in the gaming community in terms of using these single board computers uh, for optimization purposes. Four gigs ain't going to cut it anymore, guys. Trust me. Trust me on this. In order to get better sustained gaming potential, you will need to have at least 8 or 16 gigs of RAM. We've been looking at some additional options in terms of AAA gaming, some of the additional things that we can do. You will need eight and 16. Uh, four is really no longer the standard. If you just want to run Atari or NES, then you're probably better off just sticking with the Raspberry Pi 2 or 3B plus for the most part, heck, maybe even a Pi 4. But if you're looking to spend more money getting a better device that uh, that's capable of going up to 3.1 gigahertz with the Raspberry Pi 5 and also 800 megahertz of GPU, and you're looking for some additional emulation uh, I won't speak of it right now, but trust me, you will need to have more RAM. It will affect your gaming performance, especially with Sega Saturn and some of the other things that we got uh, coming up uh, as well. But until next time, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Also consider subscribing to me on Patreon as well as my other Facebook groups. Ciao. Talk to you guys later. Peace out. Bye-bye.